and welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for gamers by gamers. I am your host, Darren, and these are my sidekicks, Hex and Bajoob. It's Bajo, not Bajoob. <laughs> Bajoob. <laughs> hey, Darren, what's oh. going on? Are you starting to host the show without me? Uh, negative, Hex. I was just warming up. Right, well, Goose and Bajo aren't back from their trip to E3 yet, but I'm still in charge, OK? Uh, technically, I am your co-host, Hex, so I am co-in charge. Mm, I guess so. All right, well, coming up on the show, we fight off an invasion force in Kirby Planet Robobot. <laughs> Plus, we captain a team of crack space robots in Steamworld Heist. Wait a minute, Darren. How did we end up with two robot games to review this week? Oh, it must be pure coincidence, Hex. <laughs> uh, now, boot up your brain, Sportlings, because it's time for Darren's Challenge! Today, I'm asking you this. In Minecraft Wii U Edition, the free Super Mario mashup pack features music from which classic Mario game? Answer at the end of the show. No, it feels like you've been planning this all along, knowing that Goose and Bajo weren't going to be here. Oh, speaking of Goose, it's time for Goose's Gaming. Wait a minute, we have no Goose. Oh, don't worry, Hex. It's all running exactly to plan. <laughs> I mean, it's under control. It's all under control. Oh, welcome to Darren's Gaming Picks. Uh, Goose couldn't make it this week, but as you can see, he's close to my heart. Oh, this week, it's all about E3, of course. So many games, so much news. Oh, oh, oh. Microsoft has revealed not one, but two new consoles. One is essentially just a smaller version of the current Xbox One, which is due out later this year. The other was called Project Scorpio, and is a much more powerful version of the Xbox One to be released in 2017. Microsoft also announced a new update for some versions of Minecraft, known as the Friendly Update. This will let players from the Windows 10, Pocket Edition, and Gear VR editions all play together online. They also announced texture packs and add-on mods will be coming to the Pocket Edition later this year. The other big game companies were busy with announcements too. Sony didn't show off any new consoles, but as for what they did show off, well, we know a lot of you have been waiting for a new Crash Bandicoot game, and they kind of have one. There are brand new remasters of the first three Crash Bandicoot games coming to the PS4, and he's going to make an appearance in Skylanders Imaginators. Not quite the brand new adventure we were hoping for, but better than nothing, I suppose. Meanwhile, Nintendo had a very low-key event this year. There was no sign or mention of their upcoming NX console. But we got good looks at Pokemon Sun and Moon and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which both look to be shaping up very nicely indeed. And those were just a few of the highlights from this year's show. I can't wait for Goose and Baju to come back with all the hot games gossip. <laughs> oh, oh, and also, don't forget to keep sending in your original Pokemon designs if you want a chance to win some sweet Spawn Point loot. <laughs> Just take a look at our website here. Now, back to the studio. <laughs> OK, Darren, it's time for our first review, Steam World Heist, a game all about robots. Affirmative Hex. Uh, Spawnlings may be familiar with the Steam World name, because in the past we reviewed the excellent Steam World Dig on the show. However, Steam World Heist is a very different type of game. This one takes place in space! Plus, it's an entirely turn-based game. It looks like an action platformer, but every move needs to be carefully considered as you position your bots and take your shots. The story focuses on a small crew of cow bots, captained by the irrepressible Piper, who go about the galaxy raiding ships and fighting back against the corrupt royalists. As your adventure expands, so too does the map and your scurvy crew. Wait, robots don't get scurvy, do they, Darren? Oh, Hex. Robot scurvy is a horrible, rusty condition that debilitates joints. Oh, wow, wow, wow. All right, I'll take your word for it. Hmm. Uh, anyhow, most missions begin with you boarding a ship, and then you set about methodically working your way through the enemy ship to find loot. 
Each member of your crew has a limited range of movement, and it's important to stop behind cover, like barrels, because before too long you're in a shootout. Yeah, these are so much fun. You aim your bot's weapons manually, so it's all about trying to get the right angle on your enemies, and to look for the opportunity to trigger ricochets, which can hit your enemies from a direction that they're not expecting. Oh, gotcha! <laughs> Different weapons will do different amounts of damage, or have a perk such as laser sights or a wider spread. Uh, you've also got items like armour and grenades, and each bot has their own abilities, such as being able to heal, or to perform a special move like a skill shot that lets you fire twice. Oh, there's nothing we can't do. Yeah, there's a lot to take into account during these shootouts, isn't there? Some weapons don't let you fire after moving, or you might come up against turrets that pop out of the ceiling. And of course, beware the exploding barrels. <laughs> oh, all those poor broken robot parts. Oh, it's all right, Darren. Your characters are never gone for good, because as long as one makes it out of an enemy ship alive, then you all get repaired for the next mission. And it's fun to set out and look for your next job. I really like the weird little places you find, like shops that sell gear, or space bars where you can hire new cowbots to join your crew. And of course, Hex, let's not forget about the selection of delightful hats. Oh yeah, you can find and equip all sorts of unique hats in this game. They don't seem to have any effect other than looking fabulous, but that's pretty cool, I suppose. Uh, actually, I found it helped me identify my bots quickly during a battle. Oh, and there's nothing more exciting than a shot missing you by a shave of paint and knocking off your hat. Yikes! <laughs> you know, as interesting and as difficult as these strategic shootouts are, Darren, I did find the game starting to get a little bit repetitive. Even though the enemy ships are randomly generated, a lot of the fights would tend to go the same way, with you getting through waves of enemies until it was safe to grab the loot. That is a fair criticism, Hex, but I personally never got tired of the challenge as you're always levelling up your bots and trying out new gear, allowing you to tackle tougher and tougher missions. So, what are you going to score it? Well, I think it's a really well-made game and I love the visual style and the cute robot voices. <laughs> and it's a great slice of very original tactical combat. I'm giving it three and a half out of five rubber chickens. How about you? I have to say, Hex, I'm rather enamoured with Captain Piper and her crew. I think SteamWorld Heist is a brilliant game. It's 4.5 rubber chickens from me. OK, great. Well, I guess it's time for it's me... It's time for Strategy Sirs! An excellent idea, Hex. Here's one I prepared earlier with Goose. Roll the tape, Lee! <laughs> Oh, Sir Goose, I'm bored. What plaything can you offer me today? Uh, what of another game of chess, my lord? Oh, we've already played chess. Uh, maybe a game of cards? Cards are boring. Uh, what if it was a digital card game, sir? Aha! Yes, and there's none quite as digital as Hearthstone. Indeed, sir. I'm glad you're here, friend. There are a multitude of strategies you can employ in Hearthstone, but when building a deck, one thing you should keep in mind is the kind of combos you might want to use, my lord. A combo is when you use combinations of cards in succession to magnify their effect. Here's a couple of great examples that work with my favourite class, the Hunter. To make these particular combos work, you'll need to first unlock and then add the most important card, Unleash the Hounds. If you have two, it's best to add them both for maximum chance of the draw. Then do the same and add two copies of Scavenging Hyena and two Starving Buzzards. Both of these combos work best when played in the middle of the game, so it's best to wait and bide our time until there are enough enemy minions on the board and then we can unleash the hounds! <laughs> Indeed, Sir Goose! As Unleash the Hound summons a friendly minion for each enemy minion, it's best to wait until your enemy plays at least three minions against you. For the first strategy, play a Starving Buzzard and keep it alive for at least one hand. Then, once your opponent has finished their turn, Unleash the Hound! <laughs> Because of your buzzard, you will gain an extra card for every hound summoned, which will greatly increase your hand and your chances of victory. 
Yes, a, a rather safe strategy, if I do say so myself, Lord. I personally prefer to go on the offense. A more aggressive strategy involves playing a scavenging hyena first. Then, once you unleash the hounds, you can sacrifice them all against enemy minions to help clear the board, and you will buff your hyena plus two attack and plus one defense for each hound lost. You will lose all your hounds, but you will buff your hyena into a super powerful minion for the next round. Now who's laughing, your highness? Oh, indeed, Sir Goose. Of course, there is no guarantee that you'll draw the cards you'd like to use. For that matter, there's no guarantee you'll be able to get those cards in the first place. The cards you unlock when you open a new pack are always random. The challenge lies in making the best deck you can with the cards you have, and playing the best game with the cards you draw. Indeed, sir. Now, after that strategy, are you not entertained? Oh, indeed, Sir Goose. Let us head down to the kennels and unleash the hounds! Oh, many apologies, my lord, but I did replace the hounds with kittens. Oh. Then let us unleash the kittens! <laughs> oh, oh, kitties! They're kitties everywhere. everywhere! Oh, look at... Hey, hey, oh. hey, get oh, down. Oh, my soft furnishings! Oh, 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 they're quite oh. fierce, lord. Oh, my rugs! They're so oh. fierce, they're... Oh, oh, kids. Oh, 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 my, my vestments. Oh. Uh, okay, Darren, I've been doing our spawn point with Bajo for years now, so how about you just let me take the lead on this one? Oh, of course. Go right ahead. Okay, well, first up, we, where is the laptop? The first question comes from Bede Twig, who is in Gold Coast, Minecraft and LBP3, which is in Queensland. Darren! Oh. Hello, Hex and Bajo. I've noticed that the spawnlings were being rude to you guys, including Darren or Digital, Annualizing, Robot, Ruthless, Annihilation of, Noobs. Hex, Bajo and Darren, you guys are not noobs. You guys are talented. Can I ask you questions? Thanks. One, is there ever going to be a Little Big Planet movie in cinemas soon? Two, how can you make space in Minecraft Pocket Edition on iPad? Thanks for asking. You guys are awesome. Uh, tell Darren I love him. Huge fan. Oh. Wink. Oh. Well, it's always nice to hear from a fan. Uh, but Bayde, my name actually stands for Data Analyzing Robot for the Ruthless Extermination of Noobs. Although you were close. Yes, but as for your questions, well, I'm sorry to say that no. At the moment, there aren't any Little Big Planet movies in the works that we know of, so it doesn't seem likely that there'll be one in cinemas soon or even in the next few years. Uh, but of course, if they can make Tetris into a movie, then anything is possible. <laughs> yeah, and if we hear any news about a Little Big Planet film, we'll be sure to let you know. But as for how to make space in Minecraft PE, well, I don't think you actually can, can you, Darren? Well, if they mean space as in leaving the atmosphere of the world, that's not possible. There is a hard limit on the height you can travel in the game that cannot be broken. But with the upcoming addition of texture packs and add-ons to the Pocket Edition, it will no doubt be possible to create space-themed areas. Oh, well, there you go. Um, Darren, can I have a laptop back now? It's kind of my thing. <laughs> oh, Ow. but you always get to pick questions, Hex. I so rarely get the chance. This is my one time to shine, please. Oh, all right, well, now that you've asked nicely, I suppose it's OK if you pick the questions today. Oh, hooray! Well, our next question comes from Person with a Hat, who comes from Sitting and Waiting in New South Wales. Hello, good game. I have a question about your review from last time. You said LetterQuest Grimm's Journey is on Xbox One, but I can't find it anywhere or anything about it on a Google search. What am I missing? Please help. P.S. Which part of Darren are his eyeballs? I always thought those bulbs were his antennas, but now I'm not sure. Mm. Sorry for body shame, Darren. You're a great robot. Hmm, well, LetterQuest definitely came out on Xbox One, but, um... Ah, OK. I can see your problem, person with a hat, because it appears it just hasn't come out for Xbox One here in Australia yet. Affirmative. The game had been announced as released on Xbox One, according to various press releases, and is indeed available in America. But while most games released on the US Digital Store are released here as well, it appears LetterQuest has not been. 
Yes, but it is available now on PC, so hopefully it'll be available on console soon. As for which part of my eyeballs, well, I don't technically have any eyeballs. Instead, I use a wide array of sensors located all over my body. I have infrared and RGB cameras, laser positioning, night vision, X-ray vision, oh, the whole spectrum. Well, then what are these doodads up here? Uh, well, those, those doodads are designed to look like eyes, since you humans seem to attach a lot of importance to eye contact. Uh, but really, they're just there for shooting lasers out of. And looking pretty, of course. Hmm, OK, so where do I look if I want to make, like, full-on eye contact with you? Oh, anywhere you like. I can see from all angles. Uh, but that's enough about me. Uh, let's move on to this from Master of Robots, who is in Goulburn, New South Wales. Hey, good game. Darren must answer my questions or he will get shut down. One, is it possible to go to the end in Minecraft PE? Two, has anyone made a game about you guys? P.S. Barjo do these. Oh, Barjo's away, so... <clears throat> Art? Pipe? <laughs> Nosy! P.P.S. Barjo is boss, Hex is awesome, but Darren can do better. Oh. Uh, PPPS, remember what I said about shutting you down, Darren. Thanks. M.O.R. out. Oh, sorry to say, Master of Robots, but that's a negative. Currently, it's not possible to go to the end in Pocket Edition. They do have the end portal blocks in the game, though, and no doubt it's just a matter of time until they actually make them work and let you use them to travel to the end. Hmm. Uh, but for now, you'll just have to enjoy being in the overworld or the nether. As for if anyone's ever made a game about us, well, not exactly. There was a media character in Game Dev Tycoon who went by the name of Steve O'Connell from Planet GG, which seems awfully close to Bajo's real name. Didn't seem to have either of us in it, though, so I don't think we should count that. Oh, all right, well, I think that answers that. And on that note, we're out of time for this week, so if you'd like to send us a question, then you can go here and send it in. Oh, oh. All right, Darren, back to studio. Affirmative. I'm just going to take this. All right, Darren, are you ready to take a look at the ever-pleasant pink puffball Kirby's latest adventure? Oh, affirmative. Behold, Kirby, Planet Robobot! Darren, before we go any further, I was just wondering, is there any actual difference between a robot and a robobot? Negative. Uh, well, other than the fact that robot is a real word, whereas robobot is something Nintendo completely made up. <laughs> OK, well, thanks for clearing that up. In Kirby Planet Robobot, Kirby is taking a nap when all of a sudden a giant robot spider thing invades Dreamland. And after King DDD and Meta Knight fail to stop the invaders, it comes down to Kirby to save the day. Kirby has always been a series known for its relatively gentle gameplay, designed so gamers of any skill level can have fun. Uh, for example, it's a 2D platformer, or 2.5D to be precise, uh, but Kirby can easily float above levels for as long as he likes, so platforming is rarely something you'll struggle with. Plus, Kirby can simply suck up any enemies standing in his way and steal their powers. So he's a super powerful character and it's actually quite hard to die. And now they've actually made him even more powerful thanks to the new Robobot suits. These are mech suits that Kirby can jump into and just like him, they can absorb the powers of almost any enemy. Some enemy powers are much more useful for Kirby to absorb than others, though. Uh, powers like flamethrowers and electric shocks are clearly useful, while the circus power is less useful. Uh, but the power of sleep? Not useful at all. Yeah, that's a pure troll power, isn't it? Although I think it's meant to be more of a light-hearted joke than a troll. I mean, this is a game that's supposed to make you happy and put a smile on your face through sheer silliness and adorableness. Oh, affirmative. Although I have found that Kirby games can be almost too easy. 
Charm can only substitute for challenging gameplay for so long. However, I think they've managed to create a decent challenge this time, mostly from trying to find the three code cubes on each level. These are often quite well hidden and require a bit of puzzle solving to get. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some decent variety in the puzzles. Sometimes they're fairly straightforward environmental puzzles where you have to move bits of the environment around to get them. Or some will require you to follow a set of instructions you see in-game. Or you might just need Kirby to have the right power for the job. Ah, but that's easier said than done. The game does frequently railroad you into new areas, so once you've gone through a door, there's no going back. And you may just find the power you need was in the previous area, so you'll often see a cube that you know how to get, but you'll simply have to restart the whole level to get it. Yeah, that can feel a bit frustrating, and you're never going to play the whole level again just to go back and get that one missed cube. But you only need to track down a certain number of cubes in each of the game's six worlds in order to access the final boss of that world. And it's quite forgiving in terms of how many cubes you need and how many you'll easily find. Yeah, I mean, I never had to go back through levels to get extra cubes to unlock a boss. And the campaign is quite short. It only took me about six hours to get through, so it's nice that there's that replayability there if you do want to find every cube. Oh, affirmative. Uh, and while the campaign may be on the short side, there's certainly a lot of content here to keep you busy. Outside of the campaign, there are two whole separate games with Kirby 3D Rumble and Team Kirby Clash. 3D Rumble is basically a little arcadey battle arena where you're trying to rack up combos and set high scores. While Team Kirby Clash is a sort of light multiplayer RPG for four people where you choose a character and you can level up and take on bosses with your friends. They're quite simple mini games, but they're fun and add excellent variety to the game. Oh, but the variety doesn't stop there. Once you finish the campaign, you'll unlock another two modes, Meta Nightmare Returns and The Arena. Meta Nightmare Returns is basically a speedrun focused, harder version of the whole campaign, where you'll find less health and also won't have access to Kirby and his power sucking ability. While the arena is another speedrun focused take on the campaign, except this time it's purely about trying to defeat all the game's bosses in a row. Now, personally, these aren't the kind of game modes that I really like to play. I'm just not one to get fussed about setting amazing scores on leaderboards and things like that. But it's good that that is there for players that do want to get competitive with their friends. We should wrap this up, though, Darren. What's your final score? Hmm. Well, it is a well-crafted platformer with a lot of character, content and a surprising amount of challenge for a Kirby game. I am giving it four out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, it's a hard game not to like. I'm giving it four out of five as well. All right, Darren, we've made it to the end of the show. Intact, which means it's time to find out the answer to your challenge. Affirmative. At the start of the show, I asked you this. In Minecraft Wii U edition, the free Super Mario mashup pack features music from which classic Mario game? And the answer is... Super Mario 64. Ah, oh, nice one, Darren. Hey, I will say you've been a fantastic host today. Oh, thanks, Hex. I guess that means you'll officially be demoting Barjo to a lesser job now that I've established myself. Uh, we do need someone to help clean up the office. Um, um Darren, Barjo is going to be back next week and he'll be hosting the show with me, so nice try. Oh, hmm. I suppose I do miss him a bit and my good buddy Goose. Yeah, see, that's the spirit. The whole gang will be back together. Until next time, may all your games be good ones. Hex out. Darren out. Oh, I wonder what they've been getting up to over there. Well, we'll have to find out next week. <laughs> Not, no, okay, yep, no. All good, all good. Whoa. Here we go.